Hey there, wine fans. It's Wine Shark here again. This time we're going to talk to you about wine corks and closures. Uh, this is a question I get a lot in my classes. It's often a sidebar question, but there's a lot of interesting information and some practical stuff that I wanted to share with you guys too. So we're going to talk about different types of corks and wine closures. We're going to talk about the pros and cons of each type. And we're going to talk about the whys that you cares and some issues about storage and quality. So uh, let's just jump right in. We're going to begin, of course, with the basics. We're going to begin with cork. Relatively, the, uh, relatively new in the wine history world, only 400 or so years old, this is by far the most common and the oldest of the closure options that we have available to us. This is made from the bark of the Quercus oak and is a very unique product in the world of wine. Uh, it has a lot of really interesting properties that help make it an excellent uh, closure for bottles and for storing wine. Uh, according to APCOR, which is the Portuguese Association for uh, cork, the Cork Industry, they have several different types and levels of qualities of cork. So we're going to talk about each of those for a bit. The first is this. This is a natural cork. This is 100% cored from a piece of bark all the way through and shaped. Okay? It is the most expensive and the highest quality of them. Um, you'll know you can see a natural cork because it will have kind of some natural imperfections when you pull it out. And you'll see when you break it apart, it turns into sort of the natural wood shape of that cork bark. They're fairly easy to tear. Okay, High quality corks and high quality wines, this is excellent. These can be pretty expensive. I'll talk about cost later. Next, we have what's called colmated cork. Okay, Colmated cork looks very similar to natural cork. You'll see up there. Okay, and uh, what we see though is that when we pull this apart, you can also notice that the voids and the holes of the natural cork are filled in. So what they do is they take a natural cork and then add uh, cork dust and glue to smooth out and strengthen the cork. Um, it's again, not quite as high quality, but still offers kind of a middle point in between the highest quality and the lowest, okay? So you might see that, it's called colmated cork. Next up, you've got agglomerated cork, right? Which is like this. You'll notice it's very consistent. It doesn't have a natural look. It looks like a processed product. That's because it's made from cork particles and cork dust that are then glued together and pressed under high pressure and steam, okay? So this is very, very tough. You can't tear this apart. It's very, very durable, but it's also uh, less expensive and not quite as high quality as the other two types of cork, okay? So there's also uh, multi-piece corks and technical corks, which I don't have here, uh, which are slightly different styles, but are less commonly used in most of the wine production we see. Okay, so what's the pro and con of cork? Well, cork has been around for 400 years for a reason. Uh, number one is that it is recyclable, it is renewable, and it is traditional, meaning the bark from the oak trees that they pull this off of regrows after, I think, something like 15 to 20 years, and they can be reharvested again. So it not only helps take parasites and problems away from the tree and help keep the tree healthy, but it's completely recyclable and renewable. Plus, corks, when, they're, when you dispose of them, can be recycled and turned into other cork products, like, say, amalgamated or uh, agglomerated, sorry, agglomerated cork. So very green, very recyclable, really cool. Um, what is the, the other great part about this, the other really, really important part about cork is that cork is breathable. Air can pass in and out of this. Oxygen in a little small, tiny amounts gets into the wine during the aging process and a little bit of off-gassing and various uh, products come out of the bottle as well. This helps create the environment that is required to age wine over time, okay? So wine doesn't age in the bottle with uh, it doesn't age in the correct way, let's say, without actually the, uh, the exchange of gas from the inner and the outer world. So our wine traditions as we know them today are very much developed around the concepts that we understand of how cork works. Okay? But what's the downside? Well, the downside, of course, is it's a natural product. Um, that means that its cost has gone up over, uh, over the years. As the wine drinking population has risen, so has the cost of producing high quality cork. It's in more and more demand. Uh, also, as a natural product, it can occasionally have uh, problems with hygiene. Uh, not that the you know, cork oaks are like, you know, smell bad or anything, but you can get bacteria that can either infiltrate the wood at the cellular level during the growth, 
who are also in the winery they can during the bottling process can get in there this causes a uh, bacterial growth that can have a chemical product called 246 trichloral anisol for those that are of the technical mind, or cork taint, if you just like to keep it simple. But TCA, or cork taint, has a very distinctive smell, and it ruins the wine that it gets in contact with. This, by the way, is why your, way, your sommelier waves his, the cork underneath his nose as he's smelling to detect that TCA taint. Uh, TCA is easily detectable by humans, something like parts like one part per trillion, according to some studies. So it's very easy to identify. It smells like wet dog or wet cardboard. Sometimes people describe it as a musty basement, uh, but it's very distinct. And once you smell it, you won't ever forget. So that, by the way, is why we smell the cork before we open that. We want to make sure that the wine's not spoiled. Uh, according to uh, the Cork Growers Association, somewhere between seven tenths and one point two percent, all right, of wines are corked at the time of service okay so that's a pretty large number in the, in the grand scheme of things if you produce a hundred thousand bottles of wine in a batch then you know you've got a thousand of them in there somewhere that are probably bad and that's not a good good thing for your marketing and for your brand so obviously they've sought new solutions more modern solutions than a 400 year old tree answer and so we have some new options um, the simplest is the synthetic cork, okay? This looks like a cork, it's tan, but it's not made of cork at all. It's actually made of rubber with a foam core inside. And uh, this is a easy replacement for corks because the replacement in the process of bottling, it basically works in the same fashion. You don't have to change your whole bottling operation. But it does suffer from the problem that it doesn't exchange gas. It's completely hygienic. You're not going to get cork taint, but you're also not going to get good aging because it doesn't transfer gas in and out of the cork. So these are generally used for wines that are designed to be consumed much at a much uh, younger rate, anywhere from time of opening to say one or two years. Okay. So this is a good hygienic solution. Again, a little bit more, a uh, little ex less expensive rather than cork, but still very useful. Um, next up, is uh, probably the most the more controversial answer, but is a equally viable answer, and that's the Stelvin closure, uh, what we see here. Okay, so this is a screw cap. All right, Stelvin is actually a trade name. Um, it's about 50 years old, French in origin, and it has an alum a per perforated aluminum cap with a, with a particular liner, and the liners come in a couple of different styles. Um, the pros on this. It's hygienic and immune to cork taint. It's easy to reclose on the bottle. Um, one of the things we're gonna talk about with cork, cork can be difficult to get back in the bottle if the cork is expanded. So this fits the bottle nicely and can close up very easily. Um, it's less expensive than good cork. Um, a high quality cork, a, a, an original 100% natural cork, can cost over a dollar per unit. Uh, you get some, some way down to the agglomerated level, you can get somewhere around 10, 15 cents. Well, the Stelvin closure at the high end can be about 35 cents per unit and can be down in the 10, 15 cent range as well. So these are cheap for the user, for the producer. And remember, the cost gets passed on to you one way or the other. So the inexpense is something that helps save you money when you're at the, when you're at the wine store, okay? Unfortunately, it has the same problems as synthetic cork. It doesn't have off-gassing. Uh, specifically, one of the things we worry about is called reduction. Oxidization is what happens when too much air gets into the wine, when the cork, let's say, gets dried out. Now that's a bad thing, and too much oxygen gets in, ruins the wine. Well, the reverse is also true. They've done tests where they hermetically seal wine in glass capsules, and because there's nowhere for gas to go out, the wine takes on certain unpleasant flavors, what we call reductive flavors. Okay, those are not so good. We'll talk, we're gonna do a whole thing on flaws later, but understand it's not a good thing. Um, also, the, uh, there's, the, there's the stigma of cheap wine. For many years, uh, the screw cap was associated with inexpensive, poorly made wines. Uh, insert your Thunderbird, Mad Dog, Strawberry Hill jokes here. Uh, bad, you know, bad decisions in high school and college were made because of screw cap wines. So that's something though that in the modern world isn't a thing anymore, right? High quality wines are now using this, especially if the wines are not meant to to age. If you're supposed to drink this wine within a couple of years, this is a great safe way to make sure that your wine stays of a high quality all the way up until the time that you open it. Um, now to go back the other direction on elegance a bit, there's another interesting option called the Vino Seal or Vinolock. This is a glass cork replacement. 
Okay, even newer than the Stelvin enclosure, this has only been around since uh, about 2003. Okay, it was actually developed by Alcoa, right? Of all of all people, and then they they, they uh, gave the patent over to a Czech company that produced them. This crystal and glass company, um, very cool. Works basically this. This is not the bottle this came from, but what you see here is it's got a rubber O-ring and it just sits on there like that. You just pop it off. Elegant, easy. No uh, screw cap stigma. It often has a little plastic foil uh, or foil cap over the top of it to keep this in place. But again, not a wide level of adoption. It's still pretty new, but uh, at the time of the article that I read about these, only about 300 or so wineries were using them. So they're not very common. Kind of neat, but uh, we'll see whether it really takes off. Um, another example that I do not have, unfortunately, could not find at my local store, but I have seen and used in the past is called Zork, uh, which is a replacement for cork. Uh, unfortunately, it is not produced by the Frobosco International Company. That is a deep geek joke for those that are willing to look that up. But uh, it's an Australian company, actually, and they wanted to kind of solve the problems that they perceived in the Stelv enclosure, kind of get away from some of the stigma, and still come up with that satisfying pop sound that you get when you open up a cork. So what the what the, the what the uh, Zork looks like is a rubber is a short rubber cork with a larger plunger cap. Almost it looks often very similar to a cork you might find in a liquor bottle. Then it has a plastic capsule over the top with a with a one-time plastic wind. So you basically grab this zipper, unpeel it, pop off the top, and there you go. Uh, really kind of neat, but uh, and it reseals very easy. It's fun to use. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think I think it's kind of clunky on the bottle. It looks like a giant Q-tip that's stuck to the tip of the bottle. And it kind of lacks the elegance of things like, say, the you know the the Vinalock or or even you know real and natural cork. So uh, an interesting alternative, but not something that's taken off yet either. All right, well that's kind of the uh, the summary of the types. But let's just talk about why again you care. Uh, kind of in summation. You want to make sure that you're storing your wines correctly if they use natural cork. Make sure that they stay, though, so that the wine stays in contact with the cork and it stays moist. Make sure that the conditions are right to store your corks for long periods of time. Don't expose them to excessive humidity or dryness. Uh, don't expose them to uh, odors, right? Those can actually, because the cork is porous, flavors and, and the air can get into your wine. So don't store it near, say, a cat box or, you know, next to cleaning products or mothballs. Your wine will end up tasting like those things if you store it for many years. Uh, then, of course, the other thing is don't stigmatize this. You know, this is the good thing. See this in wine these days? That doesn't mean the wine is low quality. It means you should embrace it. Okay. It's also a lot easier and more convenient. This is a toolless option. So when you're going on picnics or you're out in public and you're drinking wine out in the park, you know, that kind of thing, really nice, you know, for this. Whereas this, of course, you have to be educated enough to use a wine flat, which I'll do a course on later. I think every person should know how, but hey, start at the bottom if we need to. And that's about it for today. I want to thank you guys. Um, like, comment, and subscribe in the video comments down below. I look forward to hearing your feedback. Um, Hit the bell for notifications. There's a lot of new comment, uh, content rather that's going to be coming out here pretty soon. And uh, follow us on Facebook, Instagram. Check us out on WineShark.com. But most importantly, I want to send a thanks out to my Patreon supporters. Uh, this Wine Shark project is basically only possible due to our Patreon supporters. They are directly supporting the channel, helping make sure that we get the wine and the tools to actually do this job. And while I love to see you guys in face and in person, Patreon's a great way to support us through this difficult time. So stay safe out there, and I hope to see you all again here soon. Cheers. <laughs>